Hi, and welcome back. Well, if you remember last week, I just pulled up the core all along the starboard side, and I'd created a device to blow warm air over that deck to try and dry it out. So let's see how that's going now. OK, I've changed up the design of this a little bit. The first thing I've done is I've replaced the heat gun with this space heater, and I've just created a plastic chute here to direct the air down into that venturi opening. And I've actually put the vacuum on the temperature sensor control rather than the heater on the temperature sensor control. So the idea with that is I've got warm air building up here and then intermittently the vacuum will switch on and push it through. There we go. And then off it goes. It's running for about 40 seconds a minute every couple of minutes. So it's a bit more efficient that way and it also gives the warm air a chance to sit in the channel for a while before being flushed out. So hopefully that warm air is starting to absorb moisture and then before the moisture can condensate again it's being pushed out then the end of the tunnel. Okay well I had planned this week to start working on the starboard side of the deck to basically cut the skin off that and pull out the rotten core the way I'd done last week with the port side deck. Um, but I've decided to leave that because I want David the surveyor, who's the guy that did the original damage assessment um, about six months ago, well I'd like him to come back and help me sound the deck to find the delamination. And the reason for that is that the um, starboard side of the deck has a lot more saturation than the port side and it's very difficult for me to clearly hear the delamination. On the port side it was quite easy because I had areas of the deck that were very dry and then areas that were wet, and the wet areas kind of um, coincided with the delamination when I was sounding it. Um, but on the starboard side, basically the whole deck is saturated. Wherever I put the moisture meter, there's absolutely no dry part. So I guess maybe that's because when Wonder was on the heart in the Caribbean for three years, maybe one side was in the shade, one side was in the sun, or one side was under cover. Um, but for whatever reason, the decks are very different. So anyway, David's going to come out in a couple of weeks and do a sounding for me, and then I'll get to work on that. So for this week, I'd like to get on with working on the cap rail. To be honest, it'd be quite a welcome change from working on the deck. So let's get started on that. OK, we're getting to the exciting part now. I've just put my Triton plunge router. So now I can start to um, route up those templates to use to create the cap rail segments. So I'm just going to unpack this and then perhaps have a little practice run on a couple of pieces of um, scrap ply. Um, and then I'm going to fit the pilot cutter or trim router piece. And I'm going to use the pilot to go around the edge of the hull and trim that piece of ply down to get the outside edge flush. Um, okay, I've got my router set up here. I've got a trim router bit set in there that's got this ball bearing pilot guide so that I can um, put this against the side of the hull and get the shape of the hull cut or trimmed into this piece of plywood which is fixed up here. Now the ball bearing is actually 5 millimeters in diameter larger than the size or the diameter of the cutting bit. That means that there's an offset of 2.5 mils either side of the cutting bit. The reason for that is it'll give it a 2.5 mil offset between the side of the hull and where the bit is cutting. So that's just to make sure that the hull is protected because I really don't want the cutting bit touching the side of the hull at any stage in the process, obviously. That's the theory anyway, so let's see how it works. Okay, well I've just done the first segment on the um, starboard side of the deck um, and using the router I've got a really nice um, round curve which matches exactly the, the side of the hull. So I've given that a bit of a um, sand up so it's um, nice and smooth. So that's great, that's the outside edge done. But now what I need to do is create a template to do the inside edge. And that's a little bit more tricky than um, creating the outside edge. 
the outside edge, I can just whack this on the boat and use the router for that guide bearing. For the inside edge, it's a little bit more complex. Let me try and explain why. So basically what I've just done then, this is the boat. I've taken a piece of plywood, fixed it on, and now I've got this side. So I've got a piece like this now, which means I can put this onto the Iroko and use this with the um, pilot bearing to guide the route around. Now I need to make this inside piece. Now to get this inside piece I need to make another guide for the uh, router but that will need to be the sort of inverse of the curve so in fact I need to get a piece like that so that I can run the router along this edge and basically I will then stick that onto this to give me that edge there. The way I'm going to do that is by using a very thin uh, cutting bit on my router. It's about three millimeters across. Now because that gives me a very nice sharp cut, I can actually push the a router around this template here which gives me that nice curve and then I can take the inside piece of wood away which will give me the inverse and I, then I can sort of sand that up and put that down to finish the template. Okay, so let's do that now. Okay, this is that um, cutting blade that I was talking about for the router. As you can see, it's about 3 mil across. It's probably one of the smallest ones I can get. And it gives me a really nice cut so that I can use both sides of the cut. So to set that up, I'll use my curved cutting edge. And I'll use the edge to guide the base of this router. Note that I'm not able to use with this spindle um, a pilot bearing or anything, so I'm just going to use the round base, the, the router, to uh, rub against this to get the curve. Okay, so I need it set about there. Okay, well that's it, and um, it's quite a nice clean cut. It takes a reasonable amount of force to push the router with that um, cutting piece on, but basically here's my uh, inverse of that curve, and uh, it's not bad. A couple of little marks in it where the um, spindle's dug in a little bit, but I'll just sand that out and um, that'll be fine. So basically I just take this piece here which is the part that is the outside of the cut that I've just made and I'll just screw or tack this down here and then push this through the router table and this becomes the edge for the pilot bearing and I'll end up with a nice 75mm wide piece of um, template to use for cutting the Oroko. Now I'm sure some of you are watching this and thinking well why doesn't he just get his outside curve get one of these things, mark a 75 mil wide line, um, cut that, plane it back. Um, and that's probably the right thing to do or the proper thing to do. I don't really have those fine crafting skills to use a plane to get that curve right. And so for me, it's just easier to use the machines and create the jigs and let the machines do the cutting without me having to do any sort of fine um, handwork so that's the plan. So the next step is to get a bit of a factory production line going and run all of these templates through the routing table. I've got four of these templates made up because there's four curved pieces of timber that make up um, each side of the entire cap rail. Now somebody did make a comment that I only needed to get the one template and the whole um, hull had the same curve which was really exciting news, but when I made the first template, I found that that curve didn't actually fit against the hull as I moved it towards the back of the boat. The curve actually does change, at least on my boat. So if I did have the one template, it wouldn't be um, flush all the way around, it'd be sticking out in parts. What I haven't tested yet is whether the starboard side is exactly symmetrical to the port side. Um, 
that's the case, then I only need to make four templates and then just rotate, flip that over for the other side. But I can't be sure about that, and I can't make any assumptions that the boat is perfectly symmetrical. I've not been able to test it out yet because on the port side I've still got all that um, plastic um, taped up against the side of the gunnel, so there's no room to get this on there. So that'll be the next test. If not, well, I need to make another four templates, which will add another couple of days' work. But uh, fingers crossed, it is relatively symmetrical, and I can just invert each corresponding template to get the corresponding, corresponding size. So I've got my template here which I used um, for the starboard side and measured up against the starboard side hull and then I just basically flip it over like that to get the port side. So I'm just going to use some hot glue to um, stick this on and then I can run it through the routing table with the, with the flush trim bit on it to get it the right, uh, right shape and right size. So just give it a bit of a wipe down so I can get a good um, bond with the glue that will just tack it in place. Okay, so I've got my glue gun here. Glue is ready to go. This sticks really quickly, so the trick is to try and line it up without touching anything, which I'm really struggling with. Got my marker there to try and get an even margin the whole way along. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that one's okay. The trick is to get just the right amount of margin either side. Um, you don't want to have too much waste wood here. I found with that trim router that it really only likes to take off one or two mils, two mils tops. Um, but obviously you want to leave enough so that you've got something for the bit to dig into. Uh, you, want to, you don't want to void here. Okay. Okay, so that's done. The next step is to um, route out a trench to create the, the profile, which I've done for this one as a sample. Um, so you can see there, there's that sort of um, trench that goes through the middle to give a little overhang of 13 mil either side. <clears throat> so basically this, uh, this trench is 50 mil across and uh, 18 mil deep. So that's a fair amount of material to remove. Uh, so the way I'm doing it is setting up the uh, routing table with a bit that's uh, 25 mil across and I'm cutting in on one side to 9 mils deep and then moving it up to 18 mils deep and doing a second cut and then uh, moving it over by 25 mils doing another low cut at 9 mils and then a second cut at 18 mils. So this cavity is basically cut out 
um, after four different um, cuts just to sort of make it a little bit easier on the bits and the router um, because this, this wood is fairly tough. So that's one sample. It's now just a matter of sitting down and doing all of them one after the other. So let's get on with that now. Okay, well I've just finished up with all the routing work and I've got my eight um, segments of cap rail here. And at first glance I'm actually pretty pleased with the way they came out. I did need to do one adjustment because when I moved over to the other side um, to do the outer edge, there was a slightest difference in depth between the left and right side by uh, maybe 0.3 of a millimetre or something. You can probably just about see the slight mark here um, where the, the left and right um, channels were cut. But overall, I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm just doing a quick check of the uh, thicknesses here. On the inside uh, edge for depth, I have 15 and a half millimetres. And then on the outside edge depth, I've also got 15.5 mil, so yeah, as you can see there, it's it's pretty nicely done. I've got around about a half a mil difference in thickness between the inside uh, edge and the outside edge. I think what I'll do is try just leaving the, the router set up as it is and just do one more pass um, to see if I can just uh, make that a little bit tighter and then I'll probably leave it at that. And then the last step will be to cut out the profile of the um, beginning and end of each of these segments, which have got just a slightest V cut. And then um, I can get up there and dry fit them all, which will be good. Okay, let me just put them through the routing table once more then. I've just finished cutting up the um, V profile for all of these pieces. On the front piece, there's a um, V shape and then on the tail piece of each of the segment there's another sort of V like this so each piece kind of interlocks with the piece in front um, although there's about five millimeter of sealant between each of them so it doesn't have to be a perfect flush fit. Okay well I think I'll leave the update at this point because it's Monday afternoon and I really want to try and get this video out for Monday evening. So um, I think between now and next update I'll continue to work on the cap rail there's the bow sections to do, the stern section to do, and the midship cleat section to do. And they're all a little bit more complicated than just these uh, long curved pieces. I've also found a place that does 15 millimeter core material. So I think I'll take a day off to go out and um, buy all that material. So before I end this update, I think I'll just go up and do a dry fit of all of these pieces. So um, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers. Mm -hmm.